Welcome back to the channel. Today I have one of those dreaded jobs, the heater core. So this is a 2007 GMC Sierra. Silverado is the same. Actually, all kinds of trucks are the same. Tahoe, Yukon, Suburban, even Hummers are very similar. Uh, this fits 99 to 07 of the Sierras and Silverados and any of that kind of classic body style. So it's not the worst I've ever done. It's also not the easiest. But once you've accepted the fact that we're going to have to pull the dash, it's not that hard. So let's get into it and see just how bad it is. So the AC machine is already on there doing its thing. We are going to have to break the system open, so we need to evacuate the Freon. And we'll see how much was in there, if we had any leaks. We'll clamp off our heater hoses so that we don't end up losing all the coolant in the system. We're just going to lose what's in our heater core. What hasn't leaked out already. So we'll put our clamps on here. And we'll use our little quick releases to pop the fittings off on the heater core. They just slide over the tubes of the heater core, then you pull them towards the fitting, and they disengage the clips that are inside. And you just kind of wiggle and pull. Those clamps and the little fitting release tools are both available in my Amazon store if you want to check them out. You got one line off, now we'll do the other one. Slide the collar forward or towards the fitting. Sometimes you have to rotate it a little bit to get all the tabs that are inside. And now I'll start on the inside of the truck. Tilt the steering column down, take it out of park, then we can pull the bezel off around the cluster. Toss that in the back seat. Put it back in park before it rolls over us. And we'll pull the kick panel down, the knee bolster. Two screws in the bottom and it just pulls off. We can unbolt the top of our dash. Pop off these vents. They just clip in there. There's two hidden screws inside, so we need to get to those. Couple screws in the side. Can't get the driver in there. Got to do this the caveman method. I guess it's not the caveman method because it is a ratcheting screwdriver, so it's slightly more advanced. And we can reach inside where the vents went, and release the grab handle. There's just two little tabs you push in. Just kind of work it back and forth unless you have three hands, and then you push both tabs and pull the grab handle out at the same time. I don't, so got to do it this way. And we can pull the top of our dash off. That one screw in the side. Pull this A-pillar trim off. And the top of our dash is free, except for one little wire in the center for the sunlight sensor. So we're gonna have to disconnect that. You can either unplug it or just twist it and take the whole sensor out. I just twisted it and took the whole sensor out. There's a couple of tabs along the front of this that clip in the firewall. So that's why we had to pull it back to remove it. I'm going to pull out this little piece of duct work here. And we're going to pull off the metal brace underneath the steering column. Now we can disconnect the shift cable. It's just a little keeper that you pull out of there and then squeeze the tabs. We'll pop it off and slide it back in there. We'll pull the cover off for the bracket that goes to the floor, unbolt it from the floor, and we can unbolt our steering column. It's just a nut and a bolt, so you got to put a wrench on the other side, and once it's unbolted, we can push the shaft back in, and then there's one bolt down here for a lower bracket. We'll pull that out. Now we can pull the kick panel out, lift up on the sill plate a little bit, just squeeze it out of there.
unplug all of our wiring harnesses, go to this fuse box. Junction block actually, there's no fuses in there. Disconnect the wiring harness. And we'll start unbolting our dash from our firewall. There's one in the top that you have to get to with an extension and a swivel socket. It's a bunch of screws across the top. Get all those. Those are easy to see. I'll pull our kick plate off of our driver's side. And now we can get to our screws that are in this A pillar. There's a couple of screws for a bracket that goes up over the steering column. They're a little harder to see, they're down in a pocket. So you gotta use a little extension. But it has to be just the right size extension because otherwise you hit the windshield. There's not a whole lot of room in there. It's real easy if the windshield's out, but I'm not pulling the windshield out to work on this dash. So our dash is free. We did leave one bolt halfway tight so it didn't fall on us. Now we're gonna pull it out and hope it doesn't fall on us. All the wiring is still attached to it. We disconnected the shift cable because when we pull it, the shift cable is gonna slide back down in there. So now we're just gonna walk the dash out. We put the milk crate on there so it had something to rest on. This side, we're just gonna rest on the seat. And now we can see our heater box. So we'll need to unbolt it from the firewall. We'll pull the air intake tube off. Looks like we're gonna have to go find in that little thumb screw since I dropped it. Probably headed for Narnia. We'll disconnect our AC machine. Unplug our pressure sensor. Then we can unbolt the receiver dryer from the firewall. And unbolt our AC lines. Pull our AC lines off. And we'll drop the receiver down there. We had to get that off because there's a couple of screws right behind it. So now we can get to those. These are the screws that hold the heater box to the firewall. There's a few screws. And then there's a couple nuts with studs that are on the heater box. That's to help you line it up. We're just gonna take off whatever's connected. There's one back here on the top and there's one right below it. Not the easiest to get to. Luckily, this is only a little six cylinder, so there was some room to get your hands back there. The V8s are definitely not fun. But other than that screw that's way down back there, that's probably about the hardest part of this job. We'll pull our wiring harness off of there. And we're gonna unbolt our ground cable. That's gonna go with this little sub harness. We'll go with the heater box. We'll take that over and work on it on the floor where we have plenty of room. We'll unplug this actuator because it's over the top of our cover for our heater core. We can unbolt our heater core cover. Set it off to the side. Pull off our little gasket and the heater core slides right out. And there's some antifreeze down there. So we we're on the right track. We definitely had a leak. And we'll clean it up keep the clean freaks happy. See, I clean the important stuff. I'm not cleaning the rest of the heater box. You guys are just gonna have to seek counseling. So there's our leak in our heater core. All the foam on the bottom is acting like a sponge and absorbing all the antifreeze. So, it was definitely due for a replacement. There's your problem, lady. It's always nice to be able to visually see the leak. That one was pretty obvious. 
probably been leaking for a while. And we have our new heater core. We'll drop that in there. Put our little gasket on. And we'll put our cover back on. Bolt it down. And we can put our actuator back on. Which is probably already bad from the factory. And our heater box is ready to go back in. There's a plastic tab on the front of it that helps you line it up, plus the couple of studs that are on there. So you just get those lined up and push it into the firewall and then run outside before it falls off and throw a screw on there so it won't fall out. Got to be quick. Or you could have a friend help you hold the heater box up while you bolt in the other side. I don't have any friends. to make sure you don't get the antenna snagged in there. Likes to go where it doesn't belong. Actually routes through the center of the ground wires. So we'll bolt our ground wires back in. Then we'll snap our harness back in. And we'll go outside and put those screws on before our heater box falls out. Get a couple of them started, tighten it up, and then start the rest of them. If one lines up, they usually all line up. And there's that really pain to get to. It's back there. I can't see it. I know it's there. So we got to do this one by feel. So we got it started, now we're just going to slowly ratchet it in there, one half of a degree at a time. Click. So once it's all bolted in, we can snap our heater lines back in, they just push on, clip themselves in. Take off our clamps. Now I'll set the dryer back up there. Push it in. We did put some new ceiling washers on there so we don't have any leaks. Put the other AC line in. Bolt the receiver into the firewall and we'll bolt the lines in. Put our little drain tube elbow on there. Just pushes on. And now we're ready to set the dash back in. Got another belt crate. We're just gonna set it on a little ways. Then we're gonna go set the other side up. Keep going back and forth until it's ready to go up there. Again, if I had any friends, this would be easier. They could grab one side, I could grab the other. So if you're by yourself, you get in the center, you can kind of set the thing up there. The driver's side is much heavier than the passenger side. And there's more stuff you need to line up on the driver's side. So we'll get the passenger side up because it's easy. Put the bolt in a couple threads and we can focus on the driver's side. Get everything lined up. Once we got it up there, we can bolt it up to our A-pillar. Plug in our antenna wire. For those few people that still listen to the actual radio. 
We can bolt in the top of our dash here. And a couple of bolts that are hidden down in there. Get those. And now we'll reconnect our steering shaft. We'll rotate the steering wheel so that we can slide the shaft back up in there. And then we'll drop our bolt in. Put the nut on there and tighten it all up. If you rotate the steering wheel 90 degrees from center, either direction, it makes that bolt straight up and down, a little easier to get to with the impact. I'll straighten the wheel back out. We can put our bolt in the bracket down here and reconnect our shift cable and put our little metal cover back in here. Now you can bolt in the bracket that goes to the floor, put its little cover on, tuck it in, and we'll put our dirty vent back on. Ew, ooga booga, clean freaks. First, we gotta tease the clean freaks. Mm, that's really dirty. I should clean that. All right, that's enough tormenting of the clean freaks. We're gonna put our dirty vent back in. Put our knee bolster back in. That's just as filthy as the vent. Hey, they match. Ooh, that's pretty dirty too. I probably would have cleaned it, but. the clean freak's gonna cry about then. I'll put our bolts in the bottom of it. And we can put the top of the dash back in. We'll set it up there. I had to go find that daylight sensor that most likely has fallen down behind everything else. And we got it. Twist it back into the top of the dash. We'll slide the tabs in. They're back along the windshield. Push it in there. Once it's all in, start bolting it in. Put our vents back in. You gotta kinda line up the ductwork in there so they do have to go like perfectly straight in. If you force them, you end up with ductwork that isn't centered and bent over and dash vents that come popping out later. Put our grab handle in. Plug all of our harnesses into our junction box. And we'll finish bolting in the rest of our top of the dash on the driver's side. Let me take it out of the park. And we can get our bezel in over our instrument cluster. Line up all the tabs and push it in there. If you don't have a cluster bezel installation tool, a bumper installation tool will do, or even a belt molding installation tool if you're in a bind. I'll put our eight pillar trim back on. It slides in the top of the dash. Once it's clipped in there, just snap it into the pillar. cover on the side of the dash and our kick plate in. Line up the tabs and push it in. Then we'll snap the sill plate down into it. Make sure our hood cable is still working. Do the kick panel on the passenger side. So plate in and put our little cover on the side of the dash. A pillar trim on this side. 
snap it in the top of the dash, line up the tabs, and smash it in there with our bumper installation tool. Now we can top off the antifreeze, whatever we lost that was in the heater core and whatever it was low from leaking before. The AC system did have a full charge in it, so that was why I didn't bother to change the evaporator core. Plus, the evaporator core is a lot more complicated to change than just unbolting a little door and sliding it apart. I'll throw the air intake back on. Slides in in the front and drops over that stud. And we can put our little thumb screw on there that we went and found. Hook up the breather tube in the back. And hook it up to the air box. Tighten it down. We can recharge our AC system. So our heat is nice and hot and doesn't smell like antifreeze anymore. So if you want to see more on this truck, stay tuned. You'll see what else I had to do to this thing. It was kind of a mess when I got it. So until then, thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon. So I gave the clean freaks a really hard time in this video, but if you would have seen what this truck looked like when I started on it, you guys would be proud of me. All right, maybe that's a little too much. You guys would be moderately happy with me.